church, let's now. praise God. Let's Lord, praise God. Don't let anything, anything take your praise this morning. Let's magnify Jesus. Lord, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Lord, in the name of the Lord, let's I praise him. of triumph. Don't let a rock take your place. Let's give God praise. Let's give God glory. Let's give God honor this morning. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord.
Jesus Lord, Lord send the God of our salvation right now. Let's praise, Let's praise His name. Let's praise His name. Let's praise His name. In the name of Jesus, it's time to focus our attention on heaven and magnify the Lord. touch. You don't need to let a rock take your place. You don't need to let a devil in hell rob you. You don't need to let this old flesh hold you back. Amen. Praise God. I don't know what you're waiting for. Amen. God is here this morning in Jesus name. Come on somebody shout amen. The Lord is in this house in a mighty and powerful way. He's just waiting for you to respond. Amen. He's waiting for you to respond. It's because of him that I shout. I want you to put that verse back on the screen real quick, Sister Joyner. Amen. Do you know that's Bible? Every one of those verses or every one of those sentences in that uh, verse, that part is Bible. Singing and praising and worshiping, that's Bible. Amen. Dance before the Lord, that's Bible. Amen. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. That's Bible. Lead for joy. That's Bible. And when we incorporate all that, you know what's going to happen? We're going to have a heart that's going to have no doubt because we know that the presence of the Lord is in the sanctuary. I said we're going to know that the presence of the Lord is in the sanctuary. And as you respond to the Lord, God's going to touch you. As you respond to the Lord, God is going to minister to you. Whether you need healing, whether you need encouragement, whether you want the Holy Ghost, come on. The Lord is here to do a work. I said the Lord is here to do a work. Will you believe him? I said will you believe him? I said we come on apostolics. Let's begin to praise God. Come on life church. Let life be in this church today. Hallelujah. We are going to worship the life giver. We are going to worship the one that brings life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's worship and magnify the Lord. Let's shout it.
Singing and praise Him. Singing and praise Him. your hands and love the Lord right now. I feel his presence in the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Let's worship the Lord right now. 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 Come on, let's press on. Let's touch the hem of his garment. Let's touch the hem of his garment right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I feel some faith building right now. I said I feel some faith building in this house right now. Hallelujah, I feel some faith building in this house right now. Worship and praise the Lord. Worship and praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, the Lord of my yacht, the Lord of my yacht, the Lord of Seek after the Lord right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 Come on, I feel an unction of the Holy Ghost right now. I feel a touch of the Spirit right now. In the name of the Lord, 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 in the name of the Lord. I praise you, God. I praise you, God. I praise you, God. I want some of the ladies in this church to come help me pray. Amen. I feel an unction in the Holy Ghost. Amen. To pray right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Let's worship the Lord. God is in the house. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Let's praise Him. Let's sing it from the depths of your soul. I worship you because You're holy. I worship you because You're holy. I worship you. I worship you because You're holy. I worship you. I worship you because You're worthy. Worthy. I worship you because You're worthy.
Jesus' name. Everybody say praise the Lord. God is good. I said God is good. Amen. Before we sing again, I want us to pray right now. I want us to pray for Michael that God will touch him, minister to him. Amen. Let's pray for Brother Rhodes. I want to thank everybody for praying for him. Continue to pray for him. Um, Sister Rhodes sent me an update. Um, he's saying a few words now. Amen. We thank the Lord for that. And he's uh, responding. Amen. Even more. Amen. And he's starting to squeeze. Amen. Uh, hands and, and let it go in Jesus' name. Amen. So that is 100% improvement from what it was yesterday afternoon when I saw him. Amen. Let's pray that God will uh, just touch and move and minister. Amen. I, I don't know if you know this. Uh, I think we mentioned it. But the night that Brother Rhodes, I think he was still in Wilson before they moved him to Rex, or maybe it was when he got up to Rex. I don't remember. But it was on a Saturday night. He could not sleep because, you know, of wondering what's going to happen you know, what kind of surgery I've got to face and everything. And he said it was about 3 o'clock in the morning. He said, God spoke to him. He said, I know it was God because it's only happened like this a time or two before. And it was just two simple words. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. And every time that I saw Brother Rhodes before I would walk out of his room, I would remind him of those words, don't worry. I have not been able to talk to him since two or three days before surgery. I did not make it up in time because of the change of schedule for when they did the surgery. But I have reminded Sister Rhodes, amen. Just remember what Brother Rhodes said, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. And I believe God has got his hand on that man. Amen, amen. Praise God. So continue to pray for him. Continue to pray for Brother Nathan. Amen. I'm believing. Amen. It's not going to be, amen, much longer till he's going to come out of that wheelchair. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. God's going to give him strength in his body. In the name of the Lord. I believe it. In Jesus' name. Praise God. We want to pray for Nate Stevens this morning. He is sick. Amen. Pray that God will touch him, reach down, and minister to him. Also continue to pray for Christy Holland, amen, that God will touch her, bring healing to her body in the name of the Lord, amen. God is good. It's good to see Granny back in church, amen, looking 100% better, amen, 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 amen. God is an awesome God. Brother Holland? Right. Hope has an appointment with the neurologist. I will pass this along. Uh, she had her... Uh, CT scan, and they found nothing up there. Amen. So that's good. <laughs> so if Hope is watching right now, I know Nate's probably watching. Amen. You say she didn't have anything up there. Amen. In fact, when I asked her that Wednesday night, she said they didn't find anything up there, and she stopped real quick because she knew where I was going with that. Amen. But we want to pray that God will, amen, touch her in the name of the Lord. Also, uh, let's continue to be in prayer for our about our, our church move. Amen. One place that we called this past week told us at this current time they're not interested in renting um, or possibly selling their building. It's empty, but they're not interested at this present time. Amen. Two other places that we made contact with, you, you haven't heard from them yet, have you? Amen. We haven't heard from them yet. Amen. So let's pray. Whatever the will of the Lord is, that is what we want. Sister Ravinia. Let's pray for Rhoda that God will touch her this morning in Jesus' name. Let's pray for the backsliders out of this church in Jesus' name. Let's pray for our ministry, our live stream ministry. I was told this past week that there are people that used to come to this church that's watching us. Amen. That excited me. Amen. Because what does that mean? God's working. And God's dealing. 
Amen. And I believe, amen, they will make their way back home. So if you're watching this morning and you used to be a part of Life Church, you hear me, it's time to come home. Amen. amen. It's time to come home. And to our other visitors, amen, that are watching our live stream, we thank you for watching, taking time out. If you live in the Rocky Mount area, amen, within 30, 35 miles of here, come join us in church. Amen. For those that are in Texas and Georgia, West Virginia, amen, North Carolina and all Maryland, uh, those are some places that I know that are watching, amen. We've even had folks in California that I don't know who they were, they watch occasionally, amen. We thank you and we want to pray for them, amen, that if they don't know God, they'll find an apostolic church, amen, because of what they hear here in Rocky Mountain. Everybody say amen. amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now, amen. Let's call upon the Lord. I feel the touch of the Holy Ghost, amen, and God's not done. In Jesus' name, let's worship the Lord. Jesus, I love you and I praise you. I thank you, Lord, for your touch. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for your grace. In the name of Jesus, I praise you and I exalt you, Lord. I praise you and I magnify you, Lord. God, I ask you to touch Michael in the name of Jesus. Let the power of your spirit flow across him. Minister to him and touch him in the name of the Lord. God, continue to touch Brother Roach, bring healing and strength to his body. I rebuke and I come against everything that's trying to fight against him in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I rebuke this delirium in the name of Jesus. I bind it in Jesus' name. I command it to totally leave his body in the name of the Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for the progress that has been made thus far. Continue to touch Brother Nathan, Lord, in Jesus' name. Reach down. Oh, God, I speak life back into his body. I speak restoration of his equilibrium and strength in his limbs, Lord, so that he'll be able to rise out of that wheelchair in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, touch Nate Stevens this morning in Jesus' name. God, bring healing to his body in the name of the Lord. Touch Sister Hope tomorrow, God, when she goes to the neurologist in the name of Jesus. God, continue to touch Christy, bring healing and strength to her body in the name of the Lord. Touch Rhoda in Jesus' name. Oh, God, I ask you to touch and minister and bring healing to her. God, touch the backsliders out of this church, dear God. Oh, God, touch them and deal with them and draw them back to this place. Lord, backsliders in this whole area that may never even have attended this church, God. Begin to deal with them and bring them here in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, bless our efforts, God, as we reach out to our neighborhood, as we reach out to our town, as we reach out to our community, as we reach out, Lord, to our state and the surrounding areas. In the name of Jesus, I praise you and I worship you, Lord. God, I ask you to move on our behalf in Jesus' name, to give us the direction, Lord, to give us the guidance, Lord, where to move, God. I know that you're going to open up the door in the name of Jesus. I praise you and I love you, Lord. I praise you and I magnify you, Lord. I praise you and I adore you, God. Thank you for your will, Lord. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Oh, God, you are holy and you are worthy. God, you are holy and you are worthy. Come on, raise your hands and love the Lord right now. Raise your hands and magnify Jesus in this sanctuary. Oh, God, we love you and we praise you and we worship you, God. Touch our people, God. I ask you to pour out financial blessing upon the Life Church family in the name of the Lord. Open up the windows of heaven, God, and pour out financial blessing, God, as we begin to approach this period of transition, God, so that they will be able to give to the work of God in the name of the Lord. Oh, God, send forth the laborers into the harvest field, for the fields are white on the harvest in the name of Jesus. I praise you, Lord. Send forth labor. Send forth your Cornelius angels in the name of the Lord. I praise you and I magnify you, Lord. I praise you and I glorify you, Lord. I praise you and I exalt you, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your words. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. In the name of
Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 
Exalt the Lord, exalt the Lord, exalt the Lord. In Jesus' name, and everybody say, praise God. God bless you. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. So good to see everybody with us today. Amen. It's good to have Naaman back in church with us. And you know what? You just look like a lifer. Amen. You just fit so beautiful right there. Amen. It's good to have him. He was with us last Sunday night. Amen. Make sure you greet him and let him know that we are honored that he is here today in Jesus' name. Everybody say praise God. I do want to remind everybody, ladies, about your mother's memorial offering. Amen. If you have any questions, your pledges, see my wife. Uh, thank you for all the ladies that came out yesterday to ladies' prayer and soul sisters. And if you did not get your copy of the notes that you requested, make sure you get them. Amen. Before you leave, because uh, she has them for you. Following service, those that are going to uh, AYC, uh, they have some more uh, goodies to sell after church. So uh, see Brother Matt after church in the name of the Lord for that. Help them to defray their costs and their expenses to uh, AYC. And then one week from tomorrow, Monday the 25th at 7.30 p.m., is leadership training seminar. So all those that are involved in leadership or you desire to be, amen, you need to be here for that. And it will be a great time of uh, teaching and insight into the word of the Lord. Uh, Sister Liz uh, this morning sent me word that she was not feeling well, so her class will be staying in here today. Sister Alicia's class and Sister Shoup's class may be dismissed. But while they are doing that, we want to receive our tithe and offering. Amen. Brother uh, Kicklighter, if you'll come and help um, Brother Holland in the name of Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. God is good. All the time. In the name of the Lord. Brother Holland, ask the blessing on our tithe and offering. Everybody say amen. amen. Also, if you need some more cards to pass out this week, be inviting people to church. Amen. Take some cards with you after church. They are up here or they're on the little card racks on the tables. Amen. The Lord will bless you. We need to share the word. Amen. Hello. Amen. We need to share the word. We need to spread the word. Amen. In Jesus' name, praise God, praise God, praise God. Well, God is good. Sister, I think she went to the restroom. Okay. Amen. Well, thank God. If you have your Bibles, let us go to the book of Hosea, chapter 4 and verse number 6. Let's stand as we read the word of the Lord. Hosea, chapter 4 and verse number 6. Brother Holland. Okay. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Be. And I want to ask you the question this morning, are you destroying yourself? Are you destroying yourself? Brother Joyner, would you pray over the word, sir? And everybody say amen. You may be seated. Here's a story that I want to share with you. It's about two people. And you can put anybody's name in there, but their names happen to be Bob and Karen. And from my understanding, this is a true story. Bob and Karen had been saving for many years so they could go on a real vacation together. 
Bob and Karen married at a very young age. And as what usually happens, they started having kids. And as they started out as a young couple, Bob worked an entry-level job at a power plant making very little money. They barely were able to scrape by. But eventually, as time progressed, Bob, of course, received promotions as well as raises. And in a, several years after that, they saved enough money to go on a nice vacation that would also serve as a honeymoon. And his wife, Karen, looked and they looked and they found a, a, a good deal that they thought was a, a good deal through a reputable online travel agency. And they booked a resort in the Caribbean. They scheduled their flight, reserved the motel, and counted the days until they dropped the kids off with Karen's sister and Bob and Karen took their first ever real vacation. As they flew into the Caribbean, the trip was everything they hoped that it would be. The weather was perfect, beautiful blue water, smooth ocean. It was postcard perfect. Amen. You could not ask for anything better. And Karen couldn't believe she was actually taking a vacation in such a beautiful place. And Bob, he was even surprised and impressed as well. But he could not enjoy it as much as he hoped to enjoy it. Because Bob's issue was he couldn't get away from worrying about how much money they were spending. The restaurants that were around their motel and inside of their motel was much more expensive than what they were used to back home. And it was a lot more than that what they had budgeted for. So they tried to make it up by doing fewer activities. They stepped toward the pool and the beach as much as possible, not shopping or souvenir hunting. Karen, his wife, didn't seem, didn't, didn't seem to mind because she was enjoying herself. But as they packed up on the last day, Bob feared that Karen was disappointed. In the back of his mind, he dreaded getting their next credit card bill, and he tried to shield her from the totals that seemed to multiply every time she ordered a Coca-Cola or one of those fruity little non-alcoholic drinks with an umbrella. <laughs> I want to emphasize non-alcoholic drinks. Amen. And as they were about to leave for the airport to return home, Bob mentally calculated how much overtime he would need to work to make up for the unforeseen extra money they spent going to different places to eat. And as they were checking out, as they stopped by the front desk, the hotel associated chatting with Bob, asking how the, he enjoyed their stay. And Bob answered, yes, we enjoyed it. And then the young man said, did you enjoy our selection of restaurants? Would you mind filling out a survey? And Bob said, well, I'm sorry we didn't eat here this week. He didn't want to tell them why that they were so expensive and so fancy. And there was no point in telling him that he found the subway for lunch most days right down the road and some different restaurants in the evening time even though they were expensive. And as Bob said, you know, we didn't eat here the, the clerk looked at him with a, a puzzled look, and then he started clicking on his computer. And the clerk looked at Bob and said, Sir, you and your wife booked an all-inclusive vacation here. That means your meals were already paid for. They were already included in the trip, yet it appears you did not eat with us even once. And the hotel clerk said, I hope you'll reconsider and try our food on your next vacation. What happened? Bob missed a few important details when they booked their vacation. The fine print. And because of their lack of knowledge, it caused them to spend money that they did not have to spend and miss out on a huge benefit of enjoying 
fine dining at restaurants there in the motel. It was a huge loss. It was a huge loss. Our scripture reading shares some very disturbing words. Hosea the prophet, the Lord spoke to him and said, My people, Israel, are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge. What is this knowledge? This knowledge is the word of God. And because they would reject it, it's not that they did not know it. It's not that they did not have any understanding or comprehension of it. But for them, it was just book words, book knowledge. It did not leave an everlasting imprint upon their life and upon their heart. And because they rejected knowledge, the Lord said, I will reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of God. I will also forget thy children. The priests during this time, they did not seek after God. They were like a lot of people going through the motion, going through the routine. And if your relationship with God is built upon routine, just going through the motion, not looking at what the Word of God says and what the Word of God promises and how the Word of God can change your life, do you understand and do you know today that you are actually destroying yourself? You're actually destroying yourself. Bob and Karen made excuses why they could not eat at the restaurants there in the motel. But what they lacked to find out was they didn't have to worry about the price. They did not have to worry about the billfold because the bill has already been paid. I'm here to tell you today, whatever excuse you may have or whatever reason you may have, you need to put it aside and lay it aside because the bill has already been paid. Jesus died on the cross for you. Jesus shed his blood for you. Jesus fills us with the gift of the Holy Ghost. We're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of all our sins. And there is no reason, I'm here to tell you, there is no reason why you cannot live for God and serve God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. We live in a society that's bombarded by religion. Bombarded by religion. Amen. Folks, we don't need religion. We need Jesus Christ. Because you can have religion. And as I said, I think it was Wednesday night. You can sit on these church pews, life church, in the midst of the moving of the Holy Ghost, in a midst, amen, where God is touching and the word of God is going forth, and you could still be lost because you are not hearing the word of God. You are not understanding and you are not grasping within your spirit and within your soul the price that Jesus paid for you, that he took your sin, he took your failure, he took your bad habits, he took took your hang-ups and he nailed it to the cross that you might live in freedom, that you might live in liberty, that you might live under the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Oh, we live in a day and age where you can find out information just at the push of a button. It's amazing. If you want to know something, you can Google it and pretty much be guaranteed to find an answer. But even in the midst of all those answers, you'll find a lot of those answers are terribly wrong. And don't be the individual that said, well, Google said it, it must be true. Amen. Just because Google says it doesn't mean it's true. Everybody say amen. And if we're not careful, we will become so overwhelmed that we get sidetracked with everything we're hearing, everything that's being propagated, everything that's being sung about, everything that other people tell us, books that we read. We become so overwhelmed that we miss the very basic elements of the Word of God. We miss out on the very basic elements of what Jesus wants to tell us, that he loves you and that he cares for you. And there is no reason why you can't live 
live for God. You don't have to destroy yourself. Amen. You don't have to be walking down a dead end street where there is no hope. But I'm here to tell you today, there is hope. There is salvation. There is deliverance. There is a miracle working God that wants to work on your behalf. He wants to show you his glory. He wants to show you his power. He wants to give you an understanding so you don't destroy yourself. Amen. Amen. Some of the information that we receive, it would probably actually be better that we never hear it. But some of the information that we miss, amen, the things that we miss, especially when we come to the house of God or we miss going to the house of God can dramatically improve your life. Everybody say amen. amen. Some of us go through life without knowing the blessings that are available to us. Everybody say amen. amen. And without knowing, without believing what you know, that's the key right there. Without believing what you know and acting upon it, how can you take part of it? I think I may have told this story. I don't know if I have since I've been here. I know I've told it before, but I'll share it with you today. Many years ago, before I got married, I was a full-time assistant in Savannah, Georgia, and a um, pastor went out of town, and I thought for sure he should have asked me to preach. I was pastoral assistant. I was on the church payroll. But he asked a neighboring pastor who is a good friend of mine and was at that time, Brother Baldwin. He came up from Kingsland, Georgia, preached that service. And because I got, as the old saying is, my panties in a twist. You all know what I'm talking about? On that Sunday, I decided to stay home. And I told the guys that I was rooming with, two gentlemen in our church at that time, because I was only making like 75 bucks a week, 100 bucks a week, something like that. Man, I was rich, you know. And I, I told him, I said, Tommy Roberts said, I, I'm not going to church today. I'm, I'm not feeling good. But they knew better than that. And so they went to church. I stayed home. I stayed home and just laid in the bed. And I guess about an hour into church, Tommy and Robert come back to the apartment. We only lived a couple of blocks from the church. And they said, get up, get dressed, you're going to church. I said, man, I don't feel well. Just leave me alone. No, you're going to church. And so what are you going to do with two guys that were bigger than I was? I didn't argue with them. I got dressed and I went to church. And before it was all over, amen, I made my way to an altar and I repented for my stinking attitude, my spirit of jealousy because I didn't get my way. If I would have stayed home, if I would have fought against Tommy and Robert or if they did not come check on me and get me to come to church, there is no telling the course change in my life that might have taken place. If I did not respond to them, if I did not respond to God, I may not be standing here today. Amen. Every decision that you make, every turn that you make, amen, will determine your future. It will determine your tomorrows. It will determine your next weeks. It will determine your next months. And it will determine your next years. So while we are bombarded with information from all sides, let's not lose the information that Jesus has given us. Let us not forsake the law of God. God. Let us not forsake the word of God. Let us not turn our back upon God because we think we cannot. Amen. The Lord said, my people are destroyed Amen. for the lack of knowledge. You know, it's no accident that this word destroyed is used and it's a strong word. It's a powerful word. What does it mean? It means to suffer destruction. It means to face spiritual death. So without knowledge, without believing the law of God and the word of God, you can be in the middle of destruction or even facing a spiritual death in your life. And there may not be 
a point of return. If I can, Granny, I hope you don't mind me using you as an illustration. But when she went to the hospital a week and a half ago, she found out that she had a couple of infections in her body, and I won't mention them today. But it weakened her to the point that her blood sugar was going crazy, that her equilibrium was off. Amen. She was very weak and very disoriented. She didn't know what happened because she did not realize that she had those infections in her body. Amen. And it's only by the grace of God that they were caught in time. Amen. And now she's feeling better than what she's felt in a long, long time. She's looking good because she they caught the infection in time. But there are some people that will face a physical death because they're so stubborn and they're so hard-headed. Amen. They think all is well until they realize all is not well and then they've gone too far and then in a few weeks they're visiting them in the funeral home. But even though it's as real in the physical world, it's even more real in the spiritual world. We sit here on church chairs in our local assembly. We hear the preaching. We hear the singing of the word of God. Well, everything's all right. Nothing's going on. But yet because you're not believing the word of God, you're destroying yourself. You're dying a spiritual death. You're losing communion. You're losing fellowship with Jesus Christ. Christ, it's time to shake yourself and find the bomb of Gilead. It's time to shake yourself and find the great physician. It's time to make a way to an altar and quit offering up excuses why you can't. Because if you continue to do that, you're finding yourself, you're finding yourself on a one-way road to destruction. You say, well, Brother Yuzapan, what lack of knowledge am I lacking? What part of knowledge am I lacking? Amen. Amen. The lack of knowledge that Jesus can intervene in your life for every situation and for you to understand that real change is possible if you want it. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter how many times you shrug Jesus off, you're here today, amen, as a testimony of the goodness of God. You're here today as a testimony of the mercy of God that Jesus is giving you one more chance. Jesus is giving you one more opportunity. Jesus is giving you, hallelujah, another chance to hear the word of the Lord and feel the spirit of almighty God, hallelujah, that he will touch you, he will change you, he will save you, he will deliver you, he will set you on the right road, he will give you life and life more abundantly do you hear what I'm saying today don't destroy yourself because of a lack of knowledge but find life and find peace in Jesus Christ hear me today find life and find peace in Jesus Christ let Jesus touch you today you can change things in your life can change you say, well, Brother Yusupan, I've tried to change. I really have, but I couldn't. I tried to quit drinking. I tried to quit smoking. I tried to quit drugging. I've cried. And I've seen apostolic people hooked on drugs. I tried to quit lying. I tried to quit cheating. I tried to quit cursing. You just name it. I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried. And it doesn't work. Sort of like at the first of the year, I'm going to lose 50 pounds. Uh-huh. And at the end of the year, you've gained 20 more. Uh-huh. Y'all know where y'all living at? I do. I found out two weeks ago when I stepped on the scale at the doctor's office. <laughs> Amen. But when life hits you in the face and stress comes upon you, amen, whatever it is, you lose it.
you lose it, you lose it, and you find yourself going back doing the same things that you were doing. You want to know what the problem is? I'll tell you what the problem is. You were trying to change by your own power. You were trying to change by your own ability because you know up here you need to change or maybe here, whatever you want to say, you need to change. But the power of God needs to infuse you that you are going to depend upon him. You are going to love him. You are going to worship him. You are going to magnify him. You are going to glorify him and you're going to reach out to him. So while you may know it, it's not until the power of the Holy Ghost begins to flow in your spirit, begins to flow in your heart and flow in your life that you're actually going to change but I'm here to tell you my Jesus will change you because the Bible says in Acts 1 and 8 but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you that power that Jesus gives for you is given to you to live for God not just to feel good you know, we, we as apostolics, sometimes we have the tendency, well, I, I just didn't feel the goosebumps running up and down my spine today. I must be backslid. Oh, you don't go by what you feel. I said, you don't go by what you feel. Now, I thank God for the feeling. Amen. And I want the feeling as much as I can get it. But you better not be basing your life upon what you feel and what you don't feel. You're going to base your life upon what you know. Amen. I know what the Word of God says. I'm believing what the Word of God says. And I am speaking the authoritative Word of God. I am believing and I am yielding myself to the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to watch God intervene. I'm going to watch God. Amen. Turn this situation around. I'm not giving in and I'm not throwing in the towel. And I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to listen to the voices out there, but I'm going to listen to his voice. I'm going to listen to his word. I'm going to tap into the power source. I'm going to get a hold of Jesus. Amen. All of you with a cell phone, raise your hands. I'm going to tell you all about something you all can relate to right now. Some of you didn't raise your hands. You lying because you know you got a cell phone. Now, within your cell phone, you've got a battery. And these manufacturers say, this battery ought to last all day long or two days. But they lie. They lie. They lie. Hey, man, when I bought my phone, man, you should get a good day of service out of it. And I read all the reviews and what people were saying. Oh, I was watching this many hours of Netflix, this many hours of YouTube, texting and phone calls, and I still had charge at the end of the day. They lie! Because every cell phone I've had, it don't work like that. But you know what comes with the cell phone? A little cord and a little square thing that you plug in to the wall over here, uh -huh. a little charger. And if you'll take that little cord and plug it into the wall and stick that other cord in the back end of that cell phone, guess what? Wow, I've got a charge and I can make it through almost another day and find out once again, those people that sell cell phones are a liar! <laughs> but I'm here to tell you my Jesus does not lie. I said, my Jesus does not lie. I said, oh, come on, church. My Jesus does not lie. It's time for you to plug into the Holy Ghost. It's time to get a hold of God and let Jesus charge your battery and let Jesus give you a renewing of a touch of the Holy Ghost and begin to walk in that renewing and begin to live in that renewing. Quit making excuses and let the Lord touch you this day. He's given us power. Yes. So if he gives us power, why don't you tap into that power? Uh, the other day Ezra said, I'm hungry. I said, okay, baby, well, what do you want? Well, I want this. We don't have that. Well, I want this. We don't have that. I want to go to McDonald's. I ain't going to McDonald's. I said, I'll fix you a bowl of cereal. Because she loves special case cereal. I don't want no cereal. I said, all right, do without then. Go hungry. Amen. 
A few minutes later, I'm hungry, Daddy. I want this. I'll fix your bowl of cereal. And then she'll do her little stomping. No, I don't want cereal. And go into her room and pretend to cry. <laughs> does Lila do that? It must be a six-year-old thing. Does, uh, does uh, Noah do that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we're, we're not alone on that. <laughs> Amen. Praise. Thanks. Thanks for the reinforcement there. Amen. <laughs> But you know what happens after a few minutes of her doing her little thing and not getting any attention? She'll come back out and say, I'm hungry. What do you want? Oh, I'll have a bowl of cereal. <laughs> okay. Daddy will get up and fix you the bowl of cereal. But how stupid or how dumb is it? Yeah. Amen. If you say you're hungry and, and, and you don't eat what's offered to you. Right. Hello. Well, that's what we do when we don't access the knowledge of God, when we don't access the promises of God, when we don't believe God. He sets before us a banquet table. Amen. All we've got to do, as the song says, is come and dine. Amen. Come and dine at the master's table. I'm here to tell you, if you try to do it yourself, you're not going to get very far. But there is a God that loves you. There is a God that cares for you. There is a God, somebody shout amen, that's going to walk beside you, and he's going to carry you all the way. Come Come and dine. You can't change yourself. But God does not only change, he also transforms. Let me read the scripture, Philippians 1 and 6. The Bible says, being confident of this very thing, that he, Jesus Christ, which hath begun a good work in you, will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. The day that you were baptized in Jesus' name and the day that you were filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues is the day that the transformation progress began to start. But the reason why the transformation progress does not continue because you cut it off. You start walking by flesh. You start walking by feeling. You start walking by eyesight. But once you know the knowledge of the word of God and you begin to believe it, that God's doing a good work in me, even with my flaws, even with my failures, even with my hang-ups, I'm going to claim the word of God. I'm going to, oh, somebody say amen. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Even with my doubt, even with my fear, God's doing a work with inside of me. When you believe it and you pray it, and you claim it and you stand upon it you are going to see God do that work and you live in that knowledge and you begin to build your life upon that knowledge the amplified version of Philippians 1 and 6 says it like this he said I'm convinced and sure of this very thing that he who begun a good work in you and will continue the day of Jesus Christ right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. Yes. Let me tell you something. That work is not done until either they lay your body in the ground or the trumpet sounds. So while you got breath in your lungs and you got strength in your limbs, amen, he is doing a work in you if you will allow him to do the work. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 21, the writer writes, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. You think you can't change? You think you can't get rid of these habits that's got so you, got you wrapped, so wrapped up in a twine? Yes, he will. He will break those ropes. He will break those chains. Amen. That you can leave those things behind. Your fears and your doubts. You know, some of you face the same fear and doubt day after day, week after week, and year after year. That's not the will of God. But you're not believing him. You're not taking the knowledge. You're not claiming it and allowing the power of the Holy Ghost to flow inside of you. Amen. To change you. You try to overcome it by yourself. You try to figure out plan A and plan B. And if plan A and plan B doesn't work, I'll try plan C. And plan C better work because there's nothing else after that. What I'm here to tell you, you don't need plan A. You don't need plan B because I'm going to tell you who was there before plan A and B and is there after C. That's Jesus. I said that's Jesus. I said that's Jesus. He is your Savior. He is your deliverer. He is your way maker. Don't destroy yourself. Let God touch you. He will work in you. That which is well pleasing in his sight. 
Matthew 19, beginning with verse number 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. And of course, this was a requirement, amen, before Calvary. To live, fulfill the law that was given to them, and they did it by faith. They were supposed to do it by faith. Amen. And then he said unto him, and he said, which one, Jesus? And Jesus said, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not lie, honor thy father and thy mother, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And the young man said unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. I've, I've already done all these things. But at least he was honest up to that point because he said, what lack I yet? Some people think that the commandments is just the Ten Commandments. Amen. Let me tell you something. The commandments go far beyond the Ten Commandments. Anything that's in Scripture is a commandment and a directive of the Word of God that we are to live by. Hello. We are to claim and we are to stand upon. And Jesus said, when he said, what lack I yet? He said unto him, verse 21, if thou will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give it to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. The skeptic would say, well, that's nowhere in the Old Testament. You know what? It's not. But the lawgiver spoke it to that man. So it became law. It became commandment and also fulfilling the principle of that commandment right there is found in the command of God that thou shalt have no other gods before you you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind with all your strength Deuteronomy chapter 6 in case you don't know that amen what had happened this man's possessions became his God this man's possessions became his God. And when you're not willing to let some things go, listen to me. When you're not willing to let some things go and lay them down, they become your God. I don't care what they are. You begin to feel sorry for yourself. Your feelings of feeling sorry for yourself have become your God. You fall down and you worship them. And what happens when you do that? You begin to feel worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And the Bible says, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. There is nothing that I have today that I would not be willing to give up for Jesus Christ. I mean that in all sincerity. Because I love my God. I love my God. Then said Jesus unto his disciples when he walked away, <coughs> Verily I send you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not because he's rich. I pray on occasion. I don't pray it every day. Maybe I need to. But I pray that God will bless you financially. Amen. Why? So that you can give to the work of God. Amen. Let me just throw this in here. When God blesses you financially, amen, he, yes, he wants you to enjoy it, but he also wants you to use that extra blessing to bless the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. Some people say, well, praise God, I've got a windfall of $500. Well, thank God for it. Rejoice in that. But did you pay your tithe? Did you give extra offering? Well, no, not really. Didn't know I needed to. Well, didn't you know you should? Because our tithe and our offering, or our tithe is the first fruits of the kingdom, that we are to give, amen, the first fruits of thy substance, and then the offering, because I love my Jesus. But if I do that, I won't have $500. Well, just think about it like this. If you didn't get the windfall, you definitely wouldn't have the $500. So I'd rather have, amen, $400 or $350 left over than not have any of it. Amen. Hello. Oh, brother, use a pan. No, don't brother use a pan me. I'm telling you, when you live according to Scripture, you're going to find strength. When you live according to Scripture and you walk according to the knowledge and you believe what God has said, you are going to find blessing. You are going to find anointing. Don't let your feelings become your God. He said it's easier. 
for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Not necessarily because he's rich, but because his riches became his possession, his God. And when his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Then who can be saved? And look what Jesus said. He said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. You can't save yourself. I don't care how much you speak in tongues. I don't care how high you jump. I don't care how much you shout. I don't, I don't care how much you put in the offering plate. I don't care how many cards you pass out to people. You can't save yourself. We do all that stuff that I just mentioned because he saved me and I love him. But doing that stuff does not save yourself. It does not give you a pass. Welcome into heaven. Amen. Somebody shout amen. Come on now, somebody shout amen. I'm talking the truth and you know it. Amen. But with God, I don't care what the situation is, if you'll give it to him, amen, he will save you. But what happens is too many people struggle not allowing this, that God can do it. God will do it into their being, into their fiber. Amen. This is a scriptural truth. Amen. That applies not only to your neighbor, the person in front of you and in back of you, but it applies to you and it applies to me as well. Quit making excuses. Quit making excuses. You may look at God and say, God, I can't do that. Look at my past. God, my marriage is beyond repair. God, my teenager is strung out on drugs. One of the hardest things that my wife and I fought in our lives was watching our daughter turn her back on everything she knew for three or four years of her life. God sparing her from two car accidents that I know of. Man, if it would have been me, I'd have been back home, back on a church pew, but not her. One time I got a phone call. It was Christmas of 2013. I was in New York. My father just passed away. I was up there for his funeral. My daughter called me, Daddy, I'm sick. I want to come home. I called my wife. I said, I'm going to buy her a bus ticket. She's in um, Indiana, Richmond, Indiana. And so I called a local pastor up there. didn't know him. I said, hey, brother, this is Brother Uspan. I pastor in Raymondville, Texas. My daughter's there in your area. She says she wants to come home. Can you get her on a bus, and I will mail you the money to pay for her bus ticket? He said, I'll do it. I said, thank you. He calls me back. He said, brother, do you know how bad your daughter is? And I said, no, sir, I don't. He said, I had to carry her out of the motel room and carry her on the bus. She was so weak. She could not even stand on her own. What happened? She was so infused with drugs. It messed her up. She got on the bus. And her mama met her at the bus station. Another time I went to Houston, Texas to pick her up because she was sick. Another time, amen, right before Dixie was born, amen, the doctor called my wife and said, if you don't come get uh, Laura, she's going to die. You need to take her home. Why? Because she was so wiped out on drugs and she was pregnant with little Dixie. So my wife left, amen, Texas, drove to Georgia to pick her up, brought her back home. Because if she didn't, she would have died. You don't know how heart-wrenching that was to see my baby in that situation. Yeah, I wanted to shake her. Yeah, I wanted to slap her upside the head. And when she got to feeling better, I told her so. But it didn't do any good until she was ready to turn it over to Jesus. And then finally, after much prayer, Amen. I believe she got a hold of Jesus. Amen. And it has changed her life around. And even though I'm not there in Texas, we've got our spies that are watching out for her. Amen. They make phone calls. Amen. They send text messages, especially when it's concerning the little ones. Amen. But I'm proud to say today, as of today, Laura Hannah Yusupan is doing well. Amen. She's in. Oh, she came to church when she was home, but she was not in church. She was not living for God, but she's living for God today. Oh, I'm here to tell you, when you give it to God, when you give it to God, when you you give it to God and you let God take care of it. He will change your life. Amen. When you try everything has failed, the reason why is because of idolatry. As I said a few moments ago, those things that you let stand in your way have become your idol. 
Because anything, I don't care what it is, anything you put in the place of Jesus Christ for satisfaction, for identity, for a crutch to lean upon, whatever it may be, becomes an idol. And the problem with idolatry is that whatever you idolize, you demonize the other. So when you lift up that idol in your life, you're demonizing what Jesus can do for you. And that's why you don't have victory. It's time to destroy the idols in your life. As you read through the Old Testament, whenever Israel had revival, whenever the favor of God was upon them, what happened? The prophets or the kings would go through the land of Israel. They would destroy the idols. They would chop down the groves. Amen. They would tear down the high places. Amen. And the people would return to God. So I don't know what kind of grove. Amen. I don't know what kind of idol. I don't know what kind of high place you may have that act represents as an altar in your life. But it's time to get a hold of Jesus. I said it's time to get a hold of Jesus. Don't destroy yourself because of a lack of knowledge. I'm here to tell you Jesus is here to change you. Jesus is here to work in your life. Jesus is here to move and minister in your life. Start idolizing Jesus. Start praising Jesus. Start lifting up Jesus. Because when you do that, you begin to demonize those idols in your life. Everybody say amen. Jesus and his righteousness, they are the ultimate goal. Amen, amen, amen. You don't need sex. You don't need money. You don't need politics. You don't need evil. But what happens was whatever becomes an idol in your life, you begin to defend it. You begin to defend it. Well, I can't live for God because my husband beats me up. You begin to defend that action. I, I know I've told this. We had a young lady in our church down in Statesboro, Georgia. She prayed through to a, in a revival that we had. Her name was Amanda. She was 17 years old at the time. She was invited to church by one of the families in the church. She came, got baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. And it finally came to the point that her mom and dad, who were well off, had money. He worked at the university there in Georgia Southern in Statesboro. Mom worked in a, a school as a principal, I think. They made decent, they made good money. But they looked at a man and said, you go back to that Pentecostal church, we're taking everything away. And I don't know if she believed him or not, but she said, yeah, I'm going back. They took away her car. The only clothes they let her take out of the house were the clothes that she was wearing. They cut off her allowance. So she was a 17-year-old that was homeless at that point in time. But she made her stand, I'm going to live for God. And from that time, amen, God supplied her need. God supplied her need. She could have said, well, I can't live for God because of my mom and dad. Don't allow an idol to stand in your way. I can't quit smoking because I've tried and it just don't work. Quit idolizing that demon. I can't quit drinking. I, quit, I can't quit lying. I, I just can't do this. I can't do that. Yeah, you're right. You can't. But Jesus can. I said Jesus can. I said Jesus can. It's just how bad do you want him in your life and in your soul? 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. You do these things, you ain't going. That's what Paul said. But he said, but now you are washed. You've been baptized in Jesus' name. You're sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. What is Paul saying? He said, when you were baptized in Jesus' name, when you were washed, amen, and when you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, when you are sanctified and washed by the Spirit of God that infuses your life and fills your life, you are cleansed, you are washed, you re are renewed. Let that sin fall by the wayside and leave that dead dog lying there. You don't need to pick it back up, but keep your, oh, hallelujah, keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. 
Focus on Jesus Christ. Love Jesus Christ. Serve Jesus Christ. And watch those things fall away. Jesus changes everything in your life. But don't let it be, well, God, but God. Get that out of your terminology. Get it out of your thinking. Quit making excuses. Allow God to change that which seems impossible into a reminder of his glory and his, and his love and his power for you. God can and God wants to heal you. Do you hear me today? God can and God wants to heal you and make you whole. You can't do it on your own, but God can. Zechariah 4 and 6. He said, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. That which was impossible for Zerubbabel, Zechariah told him, Zerubbabel, that mountain's going to fall. You read Zechariah chapter 4. It's going to fall before you. Those obstacles, and I preached on that a couple of weeks ago, if you remember. Those obstacles, those mountains that are before you, they will fall. Why? Because it's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You need to get tuned into God. And you need to stay tuned into God. You know, I was a kid growing up. I used to watch Batman and Robin. Superman, and they would usually end the show same time, same station next week, tune in well let me tell you something you need to stay in the station tuned in 24-7 to Jesus Christ you don't need to turn it off just because you walk out of these doors, you better not leave Jesus here with you, you better take Jesus with you, you better keep your eyes upon him in what area of your life are you stuck? What area of your life can you not get over as we stand? You need this transformation process. And I'm going to tell you how with Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You want to know how you can tell if something becomes an idol in your God? I'm going to, I'm going to give you a quick insight. If I was to tell Eric over here, brother, you know better than stealing. He said, yeah, I got no problem with that. I, I'm good with that. But if I was to say as his pastor, I'm just using this as an illustration. Hey, brother, you don't need to wear purple shirts to church anymore. You need to get rid of them. I'm just using this as an illustration. Because they, they become a weight to you. If he is to get all mad, who does he think he is telling me I don't need to wear my purple shirts? I like my purple shirts. I'm going to hold on to my purple shirts. I'm, I'm, I'm going to wear my purple shirt. What does that happen? Your purple shirt has become your God. It's become your idol. It's become your God and become your idol. And let me tell you something. There ain't a purple shirt worth having if it's going to cause me to lose my soul. Now, I'm not telling you you got to give up your purple shirt, bro. It looks, <laughs> looks pretty good. But now if it starts going to your head, man, where you it looks pretty good. You lay it down. <laughs> he knows them. Lay aside every sin and the weight which does so easily beset you. And let us run with patience. Hey, run with patience. What does this mean? Just run with the flow. Run with the Holy Ghost. Don't try to outrun God. Don't try to outrun God, but don't lag behind either. And verse number two, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, Lay that sin down. Lay that weight down. Keep your eyes upon him. Don't destroy yourself for a lack of knowledge. But know this. Jesus is here to touch you. Jesus is here to help you. Jesus is here to minister to you. If you will believe him and call upon him. 
Repent of your sins. Be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost if you have not. And if you have, thank God for it. But continue to draw closer to Him through having a prayer life, faithfulness to church, praise and worship. Amen. Magnifying the Lord and you will see God work in your life and change you. And everybody say, Amen. As Brother Matt sings, if you'd like to come pray, these altars are open. Don't destroy yourself because of a lack of knowledge.
Oh, come on, let's worship the Lord right now. Let's worship the Lord right now and praise our God. He is an awesome God. He's a magnificent God. He's a great God. six o'clock, Lord willing, I'm leaning toward preaching about how praying uh, prayer with authority. I think that's the way I'm going. I'm not sure. Amen. But be here. Bring someone with you. See Brother Matt after church. Buy some baked goods. Help those that are going to um, Youth Congress. In Jesus' name. And uh, to our ladies that's going to ladies' conference this week, I told Sister Joyner already, I said, 